Uh, so uh, thanks uh, everyone for coming along today. Um, the uh, the goal for this afternoon is to really um, uh, just give a, a brief summary of the the workshop around the booking API that we held um, last week. Um, just summarise uh, what we discussed, um, some of the requirements and roadmap items that came out of that. Um, I wanted to, to do that in this call because it gave opportunity for those of you who weren't there um, a chance to hear more about what went on and give your input if you have any um, and just to kind of summarize what what I think the next steps are um, the so we, we may not need the whole hour it depends on um, how much detail we want to get into on specific items um, but after the call as well as circulating the slides I'll I've got a um, write-up of the workshop, um, which I'll be circulating as well. Those of you who are there, I've already sent it, but I'll publish it out to the, um, uh, the main public mailing list as well, so that um, anyone can start looking at it. <clears throat> um, so let me just share my slides. Actually, can you see my slides okay? Yeah, okay. All right. yeah. Okay, so um, I'll just kind of recap what the, the goals and um, structure of the work, workshop was. Um, so I, I was really pleased that we managed to get uh, so many people in a room uh, to talk about booking. Um, it's obviously a, a topic that lots of people are interested in. Um, and really grateful for the amount of time that people spent on helping us um, understand how to move this forward. Um, so the, we, we had a good, I think there was about 17 people in the room uh, altogether um, from a good mixture of uh, platform providers, data publishers, as well as users of the data. So I think we had a good balance of um, different perspectives, different viewpoints. There was a mix of technical people, but also more kind of product uh, business focused people as well, um, which I felt was important and also useful because um, some of the issues we were discussing weren't about details of the technology. It was more about the um, commercial arrangements, business models, and some of the kind of non-technical aspects of providing uh, booking API as a, as a service for people. Um, so, uh, so apologies for those of you who were there because you, you've kind of seen some of this content already. Um, but the the goals for the workshop were to um, share some of the work that the ADI had been doing so we could get uh, more of a shared understanding across the community about what the current state is around booking APIs. Um, start to get more detailed requirements from um, both the platforms and data users who are in the room. Um, we, at the, you know, the, work we've been doing in the Open Active Programme, we've had a, um, I think a reasonable sense of the, the kind of requirements and direction that we would need to go in, but we wanted to validate that with um, feedback from the community. Um, and I think most importantly, we wanted to make sure that there was um, uh, interest and appetite in the community in actually moving this forward, um, and that we had a kind of common view of um, what a booking API should look like and a sense of um, what the roadmap would be um, because for this to be successful we can't just impose uh, impose this on on the sector it needs to be something that we um, uh, work on as a collaborative project and kind of with a kind of common direction kind of technical direction um, that will, will help people move forward um, at their own pace um, so some of the discussions we were having in the workshop was kind of in the context of the work that we've done at the ODI um, and the, what our proposed direction is. Um, so we kind of recognize that um, things are moving at different pace across the sector. Some platforms already have a, uh, booking APIs that um, they uh, are offering to third parties. We know that there are projects going on between uh, individual uh, organizations in the sector to 
start to build out APIs to support uh, booking, um, but also that there was a, there were some people who just wanted to uh, wanted to know how to move forward. That um, they were keen to offer an API, but weren't sure how the best way to go about it. So we've got kind of this called mixed economy of uh, people at different stages in implementation, and we need to, as a program, as an app program, we need to support be supporting all of those sections of the community. So the kind of, I guess, three tiered approach that we're proposing to take is to firstly um, uh, define, recommend a set of best practices around building booking APIs. So that will touch on things like um, just general uh, best practice uh, recommendations around API design in general, um, but also some, I think, uh, specific suggestions about how booking APIs uh, should work. Um, those best practices will help um, support all of the other bits of work, but for those people who are forging on and, and building their systems now, it will give them a kind of touchstone so that they can make sure that they're aligning with the general direction of what the program will be recommending, even if they're not, um, not yet uh, implementing uh, whatever standard we, uh, we might create. Um, I think on the second point, there's kind of scope to um, provide some feedback to people who are already publishing APIs to help them converge on those best practices and think about how they can make it easier for third parties to uh, to access those existing systems. So this is recognizing the fact that um, uh, some platforms may not be uh, at a point in their roadmap where they can prioritize this. Um, uh, and you know there may be other area things that they need to work on, but uh, anything they can do in order to make these APIs more accessible and more useful um, will help them participate in, um, in, in Open Active. Um, but obviously we also need to, to quickly get to a recommended design for the API. Um, so um, we'll, you know, something that we can design within uh, the scope of those best practices that we'll, we'll recommend for everyone to follow. Um, so that's kind of our direction and what we wanted to get from the workshop is um, feedback on that, uh, get people to surface their thoughts and ideas about um, uh, what they think the best approach was or where they thought uh, there were particular challenges or issues that we need to address um, and start to get into some of the more detailed requirements that would support the, um, the API design. So we, we organized the workshop in kind of two halves. We had initially we had a broad discussion to try and surface some of that, of those different viewpoints, and then had some more uh, practical exercises to pull out um, both the requirements and the roadmap. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of briefly uh, summarize those over the next next few slides. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, then 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 jump in as I go, I go through. So you're not just uh, listening to me talk. Um, so I, I've tried to, uh, in the report, I've tried to capture as, um, as many of the different uh, discussion points and requirements as, as possible. We generated a lot of post-it notes over the course of the morning, um, but I've just pulled out of what I think are some of the key themes and requirements from that discussion just to kind of review with you this afternoon. Um, so it was quite a, quite a, a wide-ranging discussion, um, but I think we managed to uh, converge on a kind of general sense of direction um, but we touched on uh, quite a few different uh, perspectives um, so one thing that came through was that um, the existing opportunity data needs uh, needs to be improved in order to support booking use cases um, so one example that was given was that um, uh, it's hard to do discovery to help uh, people book events uh, for their children to attend if there's no reliable um, age range classifications on the um, on the opportunity data. So um, while the general focus for this next next piece of work is on booking, we do need to t take into account um, what the current state of the opportunity data is and be making some more recommendations about how people improve that. Um, to, so that we can you know, deal with the whole workflow of discovery through to booking. Um, and I think that what we were just discussing on the last call around facilities is kind of along that line as well, because the, uh, people need to book those as well as uh, events. Um, I think there was a general uh, 
recognition uh, everyone who's there that the think it's important to think about the developer experience um, making sure that we've got good documentation and support for developers who are um, building both building APIs but also building against them um, so we need decent test cases uh, we need test harnesses so people can build their client libraries or make uh, against uh, known systems known data um, uh, but also thinking about what the onboarding experience is like of getting a new third party up and running uh, to use the booking APIs for a particular platform. Um, and that brought out a number of um, discuss discussion points around the commercial arrangements, um, that the, what that onboarding process would look like, um, and that there will, there may, will need to be some um, support provided in order to help third parties get uh, up and running. Um, and likely to be some, you know, contractual arrangements around use of those APIs, how payments are handling, handled, uh, approaches for reconcil you know, reconciliation around uh, those payments to make sure that everyone is comfortable that, um, you know, all the due diligence is in place around security, handling of personal data and the uh, transfer of funds, etc. So there's, there's a whole kind of, lot, there's a lot of uh, non-technical requirements around that where we may just need to document some recommended best practices kind of alongside whatever we create on the technical side of things. Um, a lot of the discussion kind of highlighted the fact that um, what, if we're designing booking for uh, what I'm calling here casual users versus uh, people who already, so members or people who already registered with the pack, platform, the workflows could look quite different in terms of um, how user information is transferred, how users are authenticated, and even how payments are, are handled. Because in the case where people are pre-registered or members, much of that information is already in the platform, and it might make more sense for the platform to be uh, handling that. Whereas for casual users who are probably not known to the platform uh, and may be more comfortable with you know, making payments elsewhere uh, or uh, be reluctant to provide a whole bunch of personal information up front um, the workflow would be quite uh, quite different um, and I think what we what we settled on is that um, and this is in line with the kind of general uh, objectives of, of the you know, the whole of open active is that we should be prioritizing these kind of casual users it's that kind of very simple use case of I want to book this event now uh, are not necessarily uh, a member um, who is already known to the platform. And that simplifies, I think, a lot of the workflow. It simplifies uh, some of the data that needs to be collected. Um, uh, and I think is in line with what uh, we've heard from um, data users. So, you know, people who are intending to use these APIs in their, in their apps and services. Um, so I think it was really, really useful to have those discussions, but draw out that kind of common common direction. Um, the, um, the other thing that I think we had quite a lot of discussion around was the, the amount of user information to collect. Um, you know, what's the, what's the absolute minimum that would be required in order to uh, make a booking, whether it's for an event or a facility, um, but that versus what existing um, platforms collect. Um, in some cases, there's a, there's a whole raft of um, information about attendees that are, that are collected um, for various reasons. Uh, some of it, I think, is, might well be justifiable under you know, what's required from the event organizer. Some of it seemed to be more about um, reporting and kind of tracking, you know, tracking usage on, on different types of participation. So th there's, some, there's some kind of discussions to be had there. And I think what I took away is that um, there probably is a, like a minimum set but we just need to, of data that um, will help support the use case. And we just need to get to a, a level of understanding across the sector of what that is. Um, but that whatever we do within the API needs to be extensible to allow uh, individual platforms to um, collect more information if and when it's useful. Um, unsurprisingly, the other area of complexity was around uh, pricing the different business models that people are offering, upsells that get offered to customers at the point of making booking, uh, all of the kind of range of different pricing options that are available. So again, I think it was useful to have that discussion. 
him. But I th what I took away again was that um, I think there's a recognition that we, we need to start from the simplest thing of just offering um, a simple, either a single price or a simple set of pricing options that a third party can use to actually make um, make that booking. Um, much of the complexity, you know, seemed to come spring up from around um, members and existing users of platforms, which we kind of already um, uh, put put down the, the, uh, the list of priorities. Um, there's there's lots of complexity around kind of upsells uh, and you know, other other options, which could be included later, but it's probably not on the critical path for getting something done. Um, so when we got into the, the requirements, um, again, there's, there was a, there's, a, there's a lot more detail in the, um, in the write up I'll circulate, but um, I think the, the key things that I wanted to get out of that discussion was a, a sense of what the, over, if, sense of what the overall shape of the API should look like, you know, the kind of core features. Because um, going into it, I was wondering whether there would be strong opinions about uh, for example, how payment would be needs to be handled, or how pricing that should be handled. But it, it felt like there was um, a kind of good consensus that um, the best way to do it would be to, um, as I say, simplify pricing, focus on casual user booking use case, uh, and also a, <clears throat> um, I think what we were calling a kind of two-phase booking approach of. Uh, after, be, after checking that uh, the, there is still availability for a facility or an event, that you can um, uh, basically reserve a place by like taking out a, a, a lease. It gives the opportunity for the third party to take payment uh, and then complete the booking with the platform once payment has been successful. Um, and that, that seemed to be a, a approach that people were uh, relatively comfortable with. Um, I think the other thing that was important was uh, agreement that separating out the booking from, from payment handling um, was probably the best way to go so long as there was some, you know, there was a clear process for how funds were then transferred from the third party to the, to the platform and whatever kind of reconciliation need to happen behind the scenes. Um, so, so based on that, I think we can, we can, we can start to kind of refine what the use cases are and start to quickly work on, a design for a, um, you know, a relatively straightforward API that will cover um, those those arrangements by moving um, by moving payment and out into uh, you know, a separate set of API calls with existing payment providers and by simplifying pricing, um, it does uh, I think greatly simplify that what we actually need to to be designing and building here. Um, so. Uh, Raymond, Tom, um, you were there on on the day, and, and Ian. Is any? Did you get the same same sense from from what from the discussions? Um. Yeah, um, what you've mentioned there kind of sums it up pretty well. It was all about simplifying. Um, a few people were trying to kind of add complexity as we went along, but I think that yeah, the simple approach um, which we communicated there will get get it moving as quick as we can. Um, and then can iterate past that in, in phase two, as you mentioned. I think our commercial driver uh, in the first instance is very much not about the simple opportunity booking uh, requirement because this is kind of driven by our customers um, and it's more about uh, kind of apps and uh, extended websites. So uh, that's just us. And I do agree that the consensus was that certainly most of the people there were very keen to have the ability to um, sell their excess uh, sports hall court capacity through um, uh, through third parties uh, and more that than classes classes they said we can sell those ourselves we can fill them up it's just having empty rooms we don't like so i think there was you know i think that's another thing that there was that emphasis on um selling space as opposed to classes um but for us the first things we're going to be looking at are much more about the uh the kind of desktop or mobile app replacement type situation okay yeah that's that, that, that's yeah that's, that's a good point um it's useful to draw that out i think we need to bear that in mind as we move forward that um that the kind of the approach that we're taking um makes it easier to layer on um you know kind of member-based workflows on top of what we're doing um uh, I, 
I think there should be ways to do that, but we just kind of need to be bearing in mind that some of those things might need to evolve um, as we uh, take into account those other, those other requirements. Hi, Lee. Um, yeah, the other thing was, um, just further to what we've just heard from Ian there, was um, we may need to be revisiting, as you've said earlier, <coughs> certain aspects of the, of, of the, of the actual opportunity data uh, for us to find a way for us to publish publish opportunities that are not necessarily a um, a a sports event as such, um, because um, there there is that need for us to for us to notify space that's available. You know, um, if it it may well turn out if we can um, you know, if we can advertise the fact that the that the hall is free on these days kind of thing then that may actually drive a, a whole new set of sports which we hadn't factored into that site being able to actually offer so yeah so I, I so I'm not sure if you were on the call a couple of weeks ago Raymond but we did so we I um I ran a proposal by everyone about how to make that extension to the opportunity model um, to, to deal with facilities. Um, uh, so I, I think there's some fairly small changes to both the paging spec and the, the current data model that will allow us to do that. Um, so it's still on my, on my task list to produce some new drafts of both, both of those specs for people to comment. Um, uh, but I, I know Tom seemed quite happy and comfortable with it from, you know, from his point of view of uh, it would be, you know, it's the kind of useful way to start to surface some of those, um, you know, ability to book slots of, of space or slot, you know, for table tennis tables, that kind of thing. Um, but that's, that's definitely going to happen in parallel. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And then further to that really was uh, one of the other points which I had was um, that the bookings would be driven by data that had been surfaced out of, you know, out of the actual uh, out of the out of physical opportunity data rather than just being a you can go and book something randomly and uh, it would offer methods for you to find other other products and things like that you'd have to start off navigating navigating opportunity data and using a reference that you've got from that data you would then you know actually launch into booking sorry leasing and then and then actually booking that item later Yes, that that's yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, we should probably should, maybe I might visit the, revisit the report and make sure that that's uh, a bit clearer because I, that was certainly my assumption. But I realised that that's not you know there are other ways that it could have it could have kind of gone. But I think that's um, we're trying to make the the open opportunity data bookable. I think is the way that we we should be framing it. Okay. Uh, just making some notes as we go. Okay, um, so we also had um, a discussion about the roadmap. Um, and again, this was just to, um, you know, get surface um, some ideas about what other people thought we should be doing over the next, you know, the next few weeks uh, and months, um, but also just how get people to start to converge on, um, you know, a common understanding of what that roadmap is, um, so that we've got a sense of direction. Um, so there's some notes on that in the report, but I'll, I'll just kind of briefly, um, briefly go through the kind of main, main points. So the share in the workshop summary, which is part of the point of this call today and the document that I'll circulate uh, this afternoon. Um, there's a set of, uh, best practice recommendations that we've been developing around um, API design that we've um, we've shared with a with a couple of people already through the engage, wider engagement around the program um, because uh, it was useful to get some feedback and people were looking for some support but my intention is to to get that um, properly reviewed and, and finalized so that we can share it out um, with the community uh, so we get that kind of sense of direction um, but then move on to uh, documenting the, the core set of use cases that we want to support here. Um, and what my intention here is to, is to write down use cases for all of the things that we've discussed. So include you know, events, facilities, but also members. But what we'll do is we'll prioritize that. that. So we're focusing on the bits that everyone agreed were the starting point. Because um, the use cases will help, um, I think, 
uh, make sure that we don't lose track of some of those other requirements uh, further down the line. Um, and then I think it, I think everyone felt it was important to uh, quickly uh, identify uh, what the minimum set of user data is required in order to support booking. Um, that we have that that conversation. Um, I think there's some, there's some quite different views on on the direction that that should go in. Um, but also a minimum set of um, data fields that need to be in the opportunity data um, to support uh, booking, but also better discovery. Um, so we'd already, we've already been doing a little bit of work on that. Um, I presented some work a couple of calls ago where I was looking at what, what data people were publishing um, and in the API dashboard, we started to surface you know who's conforming to the spec uh, and some of the detail around what um, which bits of the spec they are using um, but we need to kind of turn that into a more um, a detailed set of recommendations so that there's a specific profile of feeds that we recommend um, that everyone should be publishing um, and it will maybe help nudge a few of the publishers to kind of come up to up to spec um, but also we'll make sure that we've got everything that, that we feel is necessary in order to do um, uh, well, support the booking workflows. Um, and that will, I think, will include some of the things that um, I think you know, Raymond has just hinted at there, that you, know, you need the right kind of identifiers in the opportunity data um, to be able to carry that forward through uh, into booking. Um, uh, into, when it comes to checking availability as part of the proposal around supporting facilities, I was suggesting that we need a very lightweight API to be able to do availability checking. So there may be a core set of uh, opportunity data fields that need to be in a feed in order to support that, um, that use case as well. Uh, beyond that, um, there is uh, publishing a, a roadmap um, what I was going to do was just going to uh, put together a, a Trello board for this kind of phase of activity that will be public. Um, I, I'm not necessarily expecting people to um, put a whole load of uh, comments or contribute to that. It's more just to kind of give a sense of uh, what the priorities are and how far al we are, along we are with various activities. It's just another way to, um, to help kind of communicate what's going on with the rest of the community. Um, we need to get more people on board as well. Um, so engage people beyond this group, um, and get involved in providing feedback on the specifications, but also um, being able to quickly identify some early uh, pilot implementations. So again, we know through our engagement work that there is some, there are some active projects that are looking where people are looking to start to integrate uh, different platforms and systems around booking. What would be ideal is if those are starting to follow the API recommendations and start to follow the kind of broad um, uh, design of what we want to standardize so that we, everyone is kind of starting um, in going in the right direction from early as possible. Um, beyond that, it's kind of starting to get into drafting the, the API spec. Um, we want to make sure that we're working in the open there. Um, so that we're sharing any kind of drafts uh, as early as possible to get as much feedback as possible. Um, and then start to work on getting um, some implementation experience around those drafts. Um, it's always useful to have, you know, not just test cases, but also real world uh, code that is starting to uh, test out these, these APIs, you know, in specific pilots. Um, I think that gives other opportunities for people to provide uh, feedback and suggested improvements. Um, uh, we, at some point we also need to get into some discussion around where the extension points might be. I think the, the only one that we've identified so far um, is um, how we uh, allow a, additional user information to be captured. So um, if in the workflow you, users need to be prompted to answer a few more questions um, and that's seen as an important requirement then um, we need a way to communicate that um, as part of the, um, the the kind of API lookup or the interaction with the booking API. Um, then, kind of future, like I think everyone was 
um, when we did this kind of mapping exercise, everyone kind of seemed to agree that put, pushing out um, more complex uh, pricing, more complex kind of booking requirements, um, uh, you know, is, is something that we, we don't need to get into now. Um, the, the kind of member workflow, I think, was kind of pushed out as well, but I kind of noting what Ian is saying that um, that's, you know, that's not generally true across, across the sector, that it will obviously would be, um, uh, some platforms will be more interested in that than, than, than kind of casual, casual booking. Um, so I'll, I'm going to kind of digest this, I, put together a, a, a Trello document. Um, and what I'm going to be looking for next really is um, who wants to be involved uh, and how. Um, I think this, is, this piece of work is going to be stronger the more, the more input and involvement we have from the community both in terms of shaping up the, the design of the APIs, but also in getting into developing prototypes and, and pilots. Um, so um, you don't have to all put your hands up now, uh, but I, if, you, if you wanna get involved in um, this in a more detailed way than just attending these calls and you know, providing feedback on this, then drop me a line um, because I, I'm kind of very keen that um, that you, know, that you will have the opportunity to, to contribute as and when you've got, got time. Um. Uh, it might be, is it worth me kind of talking about some pilots that we're aware of? Yeah, I think that would be great if you can, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, this is, uh, I think I mentioned this on the last call, but just to, just to do this again. So um, there is a facilities um, pilot happening with um, making facilities bookable. Um, and so anyone that's interested in that, um, yeah, get in touch. That'll be just end-to-end uh, -end, um, with Fusion initially and then others to follow. Um, and then there's also a few um, simultaneously, there's a few kind of early implementations of booking happening um, with I'm in and a few of their booking partners as part of um, a, um, a customer that they're working with. So that is um, uh, that currently involves our parks, Good Gym, um and make sweat and team up and i think i think that's that's the main three and then there's potentially going to be book when involved as well so our parks uh, good gym team up make sweat book when um so yeah that's and that that's kind of an initial implementation of something i don't know what that is yet uh, i guess it will very much depend on this initial drafting process um, what what the kind of MVP of booking looks like so that all these different people can implement some endpoint um, or endpoints to um, to allow this functionality to work and then we can evolve from there. The timescales of that are pretty tight. Uh, those implementations are happening by the end of this month, uh, by the end of February, sorry, by the end of this coming month, um, not February yet. And uh, so, yeah, if anyone wants to be involved in any of those things or um, then let me know. Uh, Nick, do you have an update on the fusion thing? Because that's been rumbling on a bit uh, recently. And um, I've been involved. I'm really looking forward to seeing some progress there. Um, do you know what the latest is? Uh, the latest is that we, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out the best way of um, getting the data out of fusion. Uh, in, a, in the format that we need it to be in, which conforms to the spec that Lee was talking about last time. Um, so we've got kind of a rough plan to do that. Um, and now it's just a case of, of, of executing that. So we can pick up the detail if you're interested in being kind of getting hold of the data when it comes out finally, because I know that you, you have been waiting for a while. Um, uh, so yeah, maybe that's something that we should pick up for this. Yeah, yeah, go for it, absolutely. Um, are there other projects that are that anyone's aware of that um, worth mentioning? Well, it's obviously, the work Ian's doing it probably it goes without saying, but it should probably be said. Uh, some really good work in implementing booking APIs at the moment uh, that we're also involved in. Um, I think that's Yay! Roll on legend. <laughs> Sorry, apologies. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I I, I think yeah, I'm not sure Ian if we've got the conclusion of whether third-party bookings are going to be in the first drop. 
think we said hopefully they would be. Is that no, right? They certainly not going to be the first drop. Ah, yeah. Right. So the, the first, the, the first intent we've got, which is um, uh, strong demand from our particular group of five, the Gang of Five, which you you saw last week, mm. um, is very much uh, about um, member bookings in websites and in apps. And then the stage after that, that would actually provide us with the essential functionality, give or take some tweaks. Um, and when you add the opportunity feed to be able to do the third party bookings. So um, we do have some thinking to do about the opportunity feed um, because one thing we found was with our biggest customer, um, there are 20,000 changes to the class record or records related to classes in half a day. So you can imagine the kind of results overhead that's going to give us. So we need to think quite carefully about what we actually want to track on that. Mm. So we need a bit of analysis before we can start to think through mm. um, what the implications of that are. It's a problem with having a mature and complex and very sophisticated system. That's the nice way of putting it. <laughs> but the advantage of having you involved in the process. <laughs> Absolutely. No, 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 it's good. We're, we're delighted to be involved in the process. Absolutely. Um, great. Well, 20,000 seems like a great challenge to, um, to figure out. So that's, that's very exciting. Um, and then, so just to check the third party booking side, then that's obviously the, we, we talked about the feed as part of that. Is, is that also the, in the first drop, it's not going to include the ability to post in bookings uh, on the third, from the third party side. Is that right? Or is that still? Uh, the, we, the, the first drop will not have the feed in it. Sorry, not the feed. I mean, the, um, the bit where you can post in third party. We talked about creating two types of members. Uh, yes, we did. Um, I, I uh, let's say yes and no um i think it'd be possible to emulate that effectively yeah um, but we'd probably want to think about um making a distinction there so we'd i mean there will be a few days work to kind of make that a specific thing saying um uh, it does this third party member exist yeah and yeah. then if not create them and but the back end to that there's this you know we've got all the tools for that it's just a question of uh, of doing that but right. just to set expectations i mean we're looking at being able to deliver um at least the technology for pilots to our customers our customers and their integrators in the next eight weeks um, i would not expect to have a feed in that time frame okay yeah uh, and I, I need to kind of go through with uh, my superior to work out when that's going to happen and the effort put into it the first need to find out how much effort that is you know how it goes we are not masters of our own destiny that's okay no that's good but, but within that eight weeks we might kind of in the yes and no sense have a uh, have the the posting the third party bookings in there uh, yes with that, with yes that. we will we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have an api which can certainly provide a framework for doing things like that and a practical api with some with the start of people using it and implementing it and again get experience with it and we've got something like um, three, four, five um, participants for that. So hopefully that will give us some practical experience and they can come back and say, oh, it's rubbish. And so. Great. Great. Okay. So, so in, in, in real terms, I think, and I'm so correct me if I'm wrong, to bring it into the kind of context of this, um, I'm in, in is one of those five so that will be relating to this this kind of use case i think the other four are not directly related to the kind of app use cases is that right uh the four we're talking about are app type people app yeah. or website type people with full members in the scenarios yeah. uh, and yes we also want to get involved with third party bookings Brilliant. um but i still haven't got worked my way through what the plans are for that yet okay yeah yeah intent but not certainty <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that that kind of covers what I wanted to just review with everyone today. Um, I've, if you've got uh, additional comments and feedback, then then jump in. But one thing I wanted to um, uh, ask you all about was the how we. Uh, how we what's the best way for us to um, start to produce drafts of the of the APIs so with the, the standards that we produce so far we're producing those in a kind of formal uh, uh, web template you know it's got um, open active branding on it and it's kind of a well structured formal specification uh, and it's still my intention that that's what we'll publish as outputs of the process but I'm aware that that's not necessarily the, mo the easiest way for people to contribute and collaborate around bolstering the document or providing feedback. Um, 
So I'm wondering whether we should be using a Google Doc, for, share Google Doc, for example, as just to develop some of these early drafts, because it might be easy for people to make suggestions or drop in comments while we're doing kind of very early work before we switch over to, the, to a kind of more formal template. Um, uh, Lee, from my perspective, we've got, um, we've got a fairly extensive API, it, various levels of detail. And the things mm -hmm. we can do soon are quite detailed. The things we can do in a long time in the future are less so. And I'm quite happy to share that. Um, I've got permission from the gods of the business. Um, now that's in a swagger um, environment at the moment. And I, I'm not suggesting that, that becomes the template for the book in API. I'm just suggesting that um, I'm quite happy to put that out there. Um, and anyone else, of course, who've got some work like that can do so to provide a, a a point around which we can try and accrete or move away from. Uh, but I'm not going to give 25 people access to our swagger system because it'll cost us a fortune. So, I mean, I don't know if we can produce that as a, as a, as a word document. I don't know how manageable that is, but that's certainly an offer from us to be able to have a talking point around that. Yeah, I think that'd be great. If, you, if you're happy to share that, if we can work out a way for you to share it, then I think that would be, be fabulous. Um, I'd, uh, you'd mentioned uh, Swagger at the, at the workshop, and uh, that was my, my other suggestion, is that um, you know, we, we use a, a shared Google Doc for just very early drafting, um, and then we switch to a kind of a formal specification template, because that's kind of what we need to produce as part of the, the W3C group um, once we've got to a stable point, but that we also create, um, we either use Swagger or something similar to create uh, a set a version of the API specs that are, are easy for a developer to kind of navigate and use. Okay, um, so I think we can probably, um, if you have a Swagger account, you can give us all access to. I think we can. I think you have multiple APIs in it, so I'm quite happy to. I'm sure there's some way of copying that onto the uh, the the Legend account onto the ODI account, and if there is, then we can just do that and say, here's a snapshot point in time. I'm happy to get comments back. Okay. Okay, yeah, all right, uh, I'll take a note to, to have a look at that. There might also be the ability to share it publicly through Swagger, uh, dot, through, through the Swagger, um, whatever that tool is that we're using for that, Swagger Hub, that's the one. Yeah, I yeah. think so that, might, that might be useful. Uh, I, okay, that's interesting. Um, I need to think about that because I don't mind sharing uh, where we are, which is unfinished with a group of geeky people um, and customers, but I don't particularly want to be exposed to the world for, for a whole variety of reasons. Yeah. Um, it's very early days for us yet. So I, I'm not particularly keen on that, to be honest, but if we can find some way of, of sharing within the open active group, I'd be delighted. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, but so are people broadly happy with just using Google Docs as a as a first point of reference? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Right, all right, we'll do that then. Um, I mean, some of the the, the best practice guidance etc. is already in Google Docs, so we're probably going to share it like that for convenience to begin with. But um, at some point, I'll probably transfer that out into a, mm -hmm. a kind of more formal deliverable. Um, good. Okay. Um, has anyone got anything else they wanted to raise on the call today? No? Okay. Um, in that case, I'm, I'm probably wind us up. Um, in terms of the next calls, um, I'm, I'm going to circulate uh, an updated schedule for over the next few weeks. What I'm proposing is that we, we focus um, probably for the next uh, two or three months purely on facilities and booking to make sure that that moves forward at the pace that, that everyone is, is happy with um, just so that you know just so we can push forward with it and actually kind of get to some uh, useful milestones so I'll put together a set of um, I'll, I'll put together a call schedule around that but um, the one that we will be having in two weeks time what I'd like to be doing there is actually look starting to look at um, at some drafts of endpoints um, what you know what it would look like so we can start to get into more of that kind of technical detail I think I think that's reasonable to do that so between now and then um, I'll circulate uh, use cases for people to look at there's the facility uh, changes to the API's and then we'll get some kind of draft document together for, for booking 
So are you going to be, um, sorry. I'll see you, Nick. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so at least there's a plan there to, um, to, for, for you to like, effectively create some endpoints that then some of these guys that are doing use cases can start to use, or what's the... Uh, so I'll create some documentation. Not actually going to do, um, not going to do a reference implementation yet because it's too early. But I think just to start to transfer that thinking of okay, we're going to have two phase leaks and book. Uh, how is that actually going to look in terms of some some endpoints? You know, we can have debates around naming and um, what the paths look like mm -hmm. and formats, but at least start to look at what what the workflow is going to be, um, and so we can get a better sense of what what data we need to be passing around. And, um, yeah, I guess that's what I was going to, yeah, go, kind of pods and formats and things like that, because I know that, that Ian's currently at that level of kind of granularity, so just, just kind of like bringing the two um, yeah. together. That's really good. Sorry, Ian. Yeah, actually, on that, I was just going to say we've got a, uh, we've included the best practices um, comments and the feedback you've given us in the latest Swagger implementation. Um, and it's been very helpful actually, so thank you is the first thing to say. Um, but if you could have another look at that and just see any of the feedback you want to give us, that'd be great. Absolutely. Um, from my study, if you could share the slides from that presentation, I, I might have emailed you about this already, that would be really helpful to add so, to feedback to, in a timely way. I'd love to do that today or tomorrow. You'll get um, that tomorrow. Amazing, I will, I will feedback tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, in that case, I'm going to wind up the call. Um, so you'll all be getting an uh, email from me over the next few days with reports, uh, schedules, and use cases, etc. So um, looking forward to pushing this on. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. All right. Speak to you all soon. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye, guys.